Hello everybody, today I am doing a special video about genetic testing when it comes to antidepressants. Which ones should I avoid? Which ones could I take? I'm so excited to be joined here with my dear friend, Hello. Dr. Laura Breeze, Hi. who is a psychiatrist, yes. as well as my friend. So Laura is actually um, Nick's cousin, so that's how we know each other. And when I posted about my getting my results back on my Instagram story, Laura responded. I responded to her uh, questions and kind of her concerns about this testing because I'm very passionate about all mental health related issues and I kind of wanted to give her my two cents. Yes. So we're doing this video today and I'm super excited to just get her expertise on this. Um, and also just disclaimer, this does not mean that we're giving medical advice. <laughs> you always this have is... to go back to your doctor <laughs> for that. Yep. And I am also not treating Anna this time, so it's just Kind of educational yep. and getting you guys to understand like what these testings do and what do they mean and how you guys can use it to make better choices yes so laura tell us what you do day to day so i'm a resident psychiatrist meaning i am in my training to become a psychiatrist i'm in my third year out of four so i'm almost yeah. done <laughs> um and i see patients uh on a daily basis outpatient so they come to my office and I treat them via, it could be medication treatment, but also therapy. So a little bit mixture of everything. And I go to different sites around Chicago. So treating different populations, just trying to get exposed and you know treat as many and various people out there as possible. I decided to look into genetic testing because I have been on antidepressants. If you've been following me for a little bit, you know that I'm on Citilopram, which is also known as Lexapro. Um, and it's been, you know, it's been relatively working. I think it's kind of hard to tell for me, but I've been exploring my options and one of my therapists actually recommended that I try it out. So I went to my psychiatrist and I asked to take it. Um, and he actually was able to provide me like the test right then and there where I was, um, I took like a little swab and I just went in my mouth, um, and put it in a little baggie and off it went. So I waited about like, he said two to four weeks. It took us about four weeks to get it back. Um, and then I went back to see him again and we reviewed the results together. He recommended two tests for me, like one or the other. One that was basically kind of completely covered by my insurance. It cost about $40 afterwards, which is like really affordable right. for something like this. Um, and I, yeah, I got the results. Like I definitely needed my psychiatrist to help explain it. But even after that, I still think I had a hard time and that's why like, it's nice to have Laura here. It's good to have a doctor as your friend. <laughs> so we're gonna kind of just get into what this test looks like. And we got a bunch of questions from you on Instagram stories. I asked you guys to send in if you had any questions around genetic testing in general with antidepressants, how seriously can we take it all, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna get into all of that um, and hopefully explain all this. All right, so I got back this stack of papers. It's about like seven pages big. This test actually tested for the meds I was already on. Some uh, tests don't do that. They just tell you like straight up kind of what probably would work for you, what won't without knowing what you're already on. So um, right away at the very top, as you can see, there's this like big red like thing uh -huh. here. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> let me see if I can get this to focus. Um, there's this thing right here basically telling me to avoid the meds that I'm on. So that's great. So one of the things that I wanted to clarify and, and that kind of told Anna at the mm -hmm. beginning was, that does not mean this medication is not working for you. <laughs> um, which is kind of what it would look like if you're looking, you know, trying to read says, right. avoid this medication. The way the testing um, kind of works is there's two big um, components. So there is the pharmacokinetic way the medication works. And what that means is how your body is processing the medication. Mm -hmm. And the main thing about that is um, how fast or how slow the medication is uh, broken, broken down by your body. Mm -hmm. And that is kind of what this testing is saying. Um, the other component is pharmacodynamics, which is how the medication affects each one of your cells, organs in your body. And that would be pretty neat when we get to finding something to tell us this is how the medication is affecting that. Um, most companies are testing for the first thing I mentioned. So mm -hmm. it's how fast and how slow you're using the medication. Right. So the way I would interpret it, this results would be that um, she is processing this medication way too fast to even have an effect. Yeah, um, unfortunately. <laughs> so, no. you know, it's kind of like, what am I doing? Um, so 
we, we did talk about this like in, in there was the question about whether or not if people are having success with their medication and their genetic testing says avoid it, what should they do? Should yeah. they stop the medication? And the answer um, is actually no. Mm -hmm. If it's working for you, um, I you know, keep taking it. Right. <laughs> why why stop that? And that was something that I actually talked to my doctor about because mm -hmm. I've been on this for I think since I guess August now. Right. Um, went from 10 milligrams to 15 to 20. So I'm at the top of what you should take for um, escitalopram. So he basically said, you know, if it's doing well, which it seems like it is, that we shouldn't change anything. Um, and also kind of like, even just situationally in my life, I've been having a couple of changes like socially and just like with my own work. So to even just say like, if I was gonna get off of it right now and just jump onto another medicine, it would be actually hard to tell if the medication was right or wrong because right. of the situational change I'm right. in right now as well. So it was, it's something that we are basically gonna track and right. see as time goes on. Right. Um, but that was interesting to me that, you know, once I read that I was like, yeah. oh my God, I should just get off of this medication. Yeah. So when I got these um, results, I was honestly a little frustrated that my psychiatrist hadn't just gotten me to take this test right. in the very beginning because I was like, wow, what if we could have avoided this medication and just started on something completely different? Would I be doing better? Like it's it's really hard to know. And so I was frustrated on my Instagram stories. <laughs> like put that as a question. And um, I think this is a great question to ask you. Right. Why wouldn't a psychiatrist typically just start um, with the genetic, with the testing. genetic testing? Right. And that's like the million dollar question yeah. right now. <laughs> so the answer, many different components to it. Mm -hmm. But I think the top reasons that I could think of was um, in the in the big one is this has not been studied well enough mm -hmm. um, for long enough to be able to say this is something that every time we do it on a patient it's going to give us results that are actually going to make an impact on their treatment mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is that um, some of the studies that have been done have been on very small sample sizes so few people um, they have been for a very short period of time and mm -hmm. the other reason is that um, we don't know what the uh, components of the actual genetic testing is which is called the algorithm yeah. um, mm -hmm. in, in the genetic sense of, of the study so we don't know how to replicate it to say you know if I do the exact same thing the exact testing on this person we're gonna get very similar results so it's kind of like a multi-layer answer yeah. of like we can't rely on them yet to use them clinically. The company that I got this testing done by is called Prescient 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 Medicine. Prescient Medicine. Yeah. And I was looking online and their whole claim around this is that it takes a lot of the guesswork out of prescribing medication. Right. And I could see that obviously being a really right. great thing right. if you have enough data and if right. you have enough so I could see them kind of offering this right now to patients right. to get a lot of people giving them their data so right. that they can have more accurate results. Right. So I could see them, like the marketing kind of makes sense for them, even though right now we might, it might not be the right. best thing for us to follow, like right. word by word for word. Right. Okay, like just to wrap that up, like how seriously can we take these tests for right. antidepressants? So it depends, right? So um, I would say the people that I would personally offer this testing to is those that I've been working with who have not been responding to any type of medication or their response has been very limited or they have a lot of side effects of the medications that are currently available. So those are the people that would say, let's get this testing done and see like where, you know, where are we falling in, right. in the genetic component. Um, would I offer it to everyone from the get-go? Probably not. Um, the chances of a medication working on the first go is 30%. Okay. So kind of having that information from the get-go, you know that, uh, you know, at least you're gonna see a 30% response. I know it's not the greatest. Yeah. Um, and those, so we have also talked about, you know, the idea that depression in itself is very multifactorial. There is genetic components to it, mm -hmm. but there's also all the um, social environment, you know, yeah. how you eat, your exercise. So there's many layers to it. So I like to look at all those components to make sure that, you know, yes, we have the medication piece, but what else is also right. needing help? Like in people your life. can't just rely on the medication as like a magic pill to just solve right. it all. I like, wish. Right. I know that would be. Oh my gosh, I would be so happy. Yes. It's a lot more than that, unfortunately. Right. But so, so yeah. So I would. Um, so I would say yeah, grain of salt. Mm -hmm. Like you know, it, it's case by case specific so it depends on the on each patient and um you know how how well you're informed and you know am i going to tell people like oh i'm not going to do it like 
get out of here? Probably not, but I will <laughs> like to have a discussion with, yeah. with the patient to know like, you know, where their concerns, like what do they know about the testing? Like, because a lot of people, I, I feel yeah. like they think that this is gonna be the answer. Right. And it might not be the case. So, so okay. you have to be prepared for that. So knowing that it's a 30% um, success rate, um, how do doctors even know how to prescribe certain, there's so many different SSRIs. Go to <laughs> yeah, you, I guess, yeah. That's what residents are right. for. So we train to see more, like the more people you see, the more um, familiar you get with the medications and how people respond. And you're right. So. Um, we all get comfortable with certain medications that mm -hmm. we have more success with so we tend to just kind of continue that with the next person Another question that we have is do most insurance companies cover this sort of testing and how much does it typically cost? So that's a question that's probably better for your individual insurance company um, Usually as a provider, there's just so many companies that it's hard to keep track of who does what and what do they cover, mm -hmm. even um, including medications, they yeah. can vary. So um, my best advice for that is um, just call your insurance company or chat with them online and kind of ask them questions straight up like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm thinking of gotten genetic testing for depression and which companies do you guys cover, if you cover at all. Yeah. So I think that will be the easiest fastest way to find out. And I, so I, I mentioned that I went with um, Prescient Me Medicine and they, for me, the reason I went with them is because they were mostly covered by my insurance. Um, I have Blue Cross Blue Shield and they covered a majority of it. I just paid $40 afterwards, which for me was pretty good. Um, there was another test that my um, psychiatrist recommended, but it would be a lot more. Um, and then I was also looking into a really um, popular one called GeneSight. Um, it's actually, a couple of YouTubers on here has actually talked about it or gotten results too, but um, it looks like it's about, they guarantee that their patients won't pay more than $350. Yes, I think that's um, But I like put in my information, um, like just to see like- What would it cost? Right, and it said that I would be fully covered and they would actually just give it to me for free. Nice. So that's cool. I'm also unemployed right now, so <laughs> freelancing. Free is nice. Yeah, but yeah, so that's a little info there. Another question that we got was, um, can can you take this on your own, or can you go to your you know your doctor, your your regular doctor for this sort of thing? Um, you said that the you you can always ask your regular doctor, right? Yeah, your PCP, your primary care doctor. Mm -hmm. um, you can ask and see if they would be willing to send the the prescription, the referral for it, um, if they can put that information, it's worth asking. I'm mm -hmm. not 100% sure if they yeah. will do it, but um, I also don't think that you necessarily have to have a provider kind mm -hmm. of making the, the prescription or giving you the referral for it. Right. I, like you said, yeah. you can just go online and kind of do them on your own. So. Yeah, like it, there there are, like it seems like a lot more of these, um, <clears throat> like kind of genetic testing kits popping up. I would just like, Kind of, and I think this will lead into another question that we actually had around like the data privacy side of things, where like you really have to be careful on who you're giving your DNA info to right. because it's very valuable and it can also be used against you in ways that aren't the best. You know, I don't think that I would necessarily want certain insurance companies to know um, certain things about my DNA. Right. That could be bad. Um, so, um, with the one that I went through, um, you know, it was through the, my doctor, so it's HIPAA protected, which means that they can't necessarily sell my data. Right. Um, there are other companies out there that you're gonna wanna check into, read those terms of service, right. um, you know, see if there's any reviews online from like privacy um, advocates out there. Um, EFF.org is somebody who often writes about that sort of stuff. Um, just to make sure, like I would be wary of like 23andMe and those like sort of like the private companies that kind of popped up out of Silicon Valley that, you know, their business model is to basically make money that way. I wouldn't exactly trust that. But that said, like, you know, definitely going through your doctor, going through these different pathways, even maybe going online and making sure that, you know, something like GeneSight is okay, um, I think could work. Right, and we also talked about the idea of making sure that even if you are getting this testing done, prior to speaking with your doctor or your provider to make sure that you do have someone you can talk to because yes. as you were able to see, this seven page document can also be just very complicated to navigate. <laughs> they do have pretty symbols, but that kind of right. stops right there. So having someone that you can go and say like, hey, I got all this information, like can you help me understand what's going on? I think it's gonna be probably the best case scenario. So 
even if you decide to just go ahead and, and get it on your own, mm -hmm. just having someone that you can go back to and kind of discuss the results, um, that would be ideal. We wouldn't want people to just get off their medications just because the results came up saying that you shouldn't be on this right. medication. Right, it's so. more complicated than that. Right. We know we need to take this all with a grain of salt, but I think it's awesome to know that this is kind of where we're going with science and medicine. Like, right. what do you see as like the future of these tests? Are they gonna become more reliable? Yes, and that's my hope. Okay. The, my hope is yes. that there is more um, studies that we can get enroll more people and get more information and actually study mm -hmm. more of the genes and how the medications are affecting your organs and your tissues and your cells and being more specific about which medication will actually work for you and also who is at most risk of developing this condition so we can even try to treat things before they get to be more yeah. serious. So will make my job way easier <laughs> and just like feel better because yes. we can help people faster and just you know just better i know it's like i wish i was living in like another future generation where Hopefully, we could where yes, that was figured out there are people but. who are very hopeful that yeah. you know five years from now we'll have even more information oh, than today so okay. we have some questions that you guys um sent in that we haven't already addressed yet so i thought we'd just quickly run through these and we'll see you know what these are so let's see what does it mean for a drug to stop working for you? Is it a genetic thing? Okay, if you um, start taking a medication, you know, you the, the standard is to see, to wait four to six weeks to see if the medication is actually helpful. Mm -hmm. But I would argue that, you know, you can see changes as soon as one week. And they can be very mild, they can be very minor. It can be anything from being able to have a little bit more energy, getting out and about, um, starting doing things that you were just like stopped doing or just didn't feel like doing. Mm -hmm. So all those things are small gains. They might not make you feel completely better back to yourself, but definitely a sign that you know things are moving in the right direction. So if you feel the medication start doing something like that for you and then you know kind of stops, then that's something that you need to go back to your provider and kind of talk and discuss and see, is it that you need a little bit more medication? You're in a very small dose. Is it that the circumstances around your life change? So is it the seasons change? You know, we see a lot more depression when it's winter time, there's mm -hmm. less sun, people are more depressed, you can't go outside. Um, did your financial situation change? So there's a lot that goes into one condition. So just because yeah. you're not feeling well after your medication may have to work a little doesn't mean that it's just the medication right. so a good open discussion with your provider about what could have happened what are the changes and how you can move from there all right so we got one more question because i think we actually addressed a lot of these other questions throughout the discussion but if you can't afford genetic testing what are some red flags to look out for what if you're just like prescribed a medication by your psychiatrist right so if you can't afford this genetic testing it doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to get help and address your symptoms mm -hmm. so the the standard route of going and, and getting medications, um, it's always welcome. And like we talked about some side effects, like asking those questions before you leave the office, it's, mm -hmm. it's good to know. Um, kind of, you know, asking why this medication and not another one. Yeah. That's also a great question yes. to ask your provider. And sometimes the answer is gonna be like, I feel very comfortable with this medication. I prescribe it to most of That's my patients. That's what my psychiatrist said uh, a lot. Like I was asking him and he'd be like, I'd be like, how do you, how do you guys pick, like, like, do you have preferences? And he's like, it's kind of a grab bag, honestly. I was like, okay. Right, it doesn't make you feel very comfortable, <laughs> yeah. but I think it's just the easier answer of like a more you yeah. know, scientific um, right. background of like, oh yeah, you know, we've seen a lot of patients who do pretty well on this medication that yeah. kind of fit what you're telling me. So that's usually how it goes. There's also the idea of therapy as mm -hmm. a startup, not necessarily starting with medication. Yeah. So that's another option if, if that's something that you want to see maybe if it helps before starting a medication. So there's many different things that you can do that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to start with this genetic testing. Right. So, okay. Nice hope. Yay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for, you for sharing me. your knowledge and awesome. expertise <laughs> with all of us. Um, hope that was helpful. No, I think I think it definitely was. It was at least helpful for me who thought like, why the heck You're doomed. didn't I? Yeah, <laughs> I'm doomed. I shouldn't be on this medication. Why didn't my psychiatrist do this ahead of time? Like, oh my God, do I need to like follow this word for word? Right. Um, it sounds like I'm glad that I took it. Like it's it's very interesting to right. just look over and to just have this now right. um, and to understand like how my body metabolizes, metabolizes certain things. Right. So that's cool. Um, 
but I think for the meantime, like I'm def I'm thinking I'm gonna stay on this medication and just track it with my um, with my psychiatrist. Um, and and see how you do. Yeah, just see how we do. So. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. Cool, guys. Um, I'm gonna put all of the stuff that we discussed, like any studies or um, links to like certain tests, in the description down below, so you can check those out. Um, if you've ever done genetic testing or if this has been something that you're interested in, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that down below. So leave a comment um, and be sure to like and comment and subscribe and all that fun stuff. And I'll hopefully see you very soon. Awesome. Bye. <laughs>